right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rich Gaitis, Executive Director of the Office of Emergency Management and Communications. Before we start, I want to wish the Chicago police officer who was seriously wounded this morning a full recovery. I also want to thank him for his bravery, along with all the men and women of the Chicago Police Department. We have 240 miles of Chicago to monitor and protect, and OEMC is dedicated to coordinating efforts with the Chicago Police Department, Chicago Fire Department, multiple city agencies, and event organizers to ensure the safety of all residents and visitors over the July 4th weekend. OEMC can receive up to 20,000 calls per day to our 911 and 301 call centers, and we, we continue to coordinate with our public safety partners to ensure the city is postured accordingly to respond to emergencies and modify plans as needed. In Chicago, we maintain communications with our public safety partners on an ongoing basis through our daily coordination calls and our weekend summer operation calls, which provide opportunities to report, strategize, collaborate, and mitigate issues. We continue to modify our weekend plans at a meeting later today at OEMC with our public safety partners, city departments, and agencies. To further enhance public safety efforts, OEMC and the Chicago Police Department continue to monitor citywide events through the Summer Operations Center where we have access to cameras, including LPR cameras, communicating to our SDSC rooms, and seamless access to our 911 floor. As we continue to do each day, OMC monitors public gatherings and protests, as well as other uh, local and national events through the Operations Center and prepare to respond to spontaneous situations. While there is no known actional, actionable information or specific threat to Chicago, we maintain a heightened sense of awareness. With possible threats becoming more dynamic, several high-profile events could be exploited. We are aware of this possibility. We continue to monitor local and national events and make every effort to keep residents and visitors safe. The upcoming July 4th weekend includes multiple events citywide as well as the Navy Pier fireworks on Saturday, July 2nd. With expected congestion on our streets due to added traffic, I encourage motorists to drive safely and plan accordingly. Remind Chicagoans to be aware of your surroundings, especially in large gatherings and high-profile events, and urge everyone to report suspicious activity to event security and by calling 911. If you see something, say something. We are expecting our lakefront to be busy this weekend with nice weather in front of us. As you know, OEMC has established a pole marker system along the lakefront and in Grant Park. It's important for residents and visit visitors to know your location when calling 911. I also want to remind parents to know where your kids are and stay connected. We want to ensure the safety of all of our residents. This includes children, seniors, and our vulnerable population. I want to wish everyone a safe and happy 4th of July holiday weekend. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Mayor Lightfoot. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Rich, and thank you all uh, for being here. Um, as we look forward to uh, this 4th of July holiday weekend, and I frankly have to say I'm amazed at the time has flown by as quickly as it has. Uh, we are here to highlight the city's multifaceted public safety uh, strategy to ensure um, safe and fun celebrations throughout our city. I travel um, all over the city on a regular basis, and what I hear from visitors in particular who either have never been to Chicago before or coming back um, uh, uh, post-pandemic, they say our city looks incredible. I hear all the time, this is um, my favorite city in the United States to visit. And that doesn't uh, occur by, uh, by accident. It's intentional. And it takes collaboration and cooperation across our city and across our public sector and, of course, in conjunction with our re residents. So I, when talking about uh, this Fourth of July weekend, it's an opportunity for us to celebrate our nation's independence, of course, at festivals, parties, shows, and, of course, um, Navy Pier's incredible fireworks display, which will be uh, tomorrow night. And I don't mind saying nobody does summer like in Fourth of July, like the city of Chicago. There is truly something um, in our city this weekend for everyone to enjoy. And it's the city's highest priority to safeguard each and every activation throughout our neighborhoods and our downtown area. That's why all of our city departments and agencies, along with our community partners, are working in close contact this weekend to be prepared for anything. And as you heard uh, Director Guida say, um, there's uh, an, another, another of multiple planning activities uh, that's going to take place here at the OEMC um, later this afternoon. And because our iconic Chicago summer is already underway, 
our whole of city muscle has been flexed and is working, resulting in a steady decrease in shootings and murders uh, throughout the past few months. And while we continue to aggressively address the violent, dangerous criminals who harm communities and work to bring them to justice as well, let's continue the important um, uh, goal of taking illegal guns off our streets. It's important for the public to know that year to date, um, we are making progress on both homicides and shootings. Um, superintendent will go into more specifics, um, but year to date, we're down 10% in homicides and approximately 15% in shootings. That is real, notable presence um, that I want uh, folks to know. Now, nobody's um, taking their foot off the gas. There's a lot more work that we need to do to build the confidence in the public that our city is safe, but it's also important to mark the milestone of progress because we're one of few major cities across the country that has actually seen a decline in shootings and homicides, and that is notable. To keep up this momentum, OEMC this weekend will be closely monitoring real time um, all uh, special events taking place across our city this weekend while also ensuring the orderly and safe traffic management around events um, as a state of readiness uh, for a unified response from law enforcement if that becomes necessary. CPD officers, of course, will be out and visible throughout the city and, and at events and available to assist any resident or visitor that has a need. And on that note, let me also say um, that we need to remember every single day on every single watch our brave men and women of the Chicago Police Department are out there literally risking their lives for our safety. And we saw that demonstrated yet again uh, this morning with the officer responding to a call for service who was, uh, who was um, savagely shot. Um, we're praying for the uh, officer, also for his family, for his partner, but this police department stands tall every single time residents need them. And we want, need to make sure, um, as people ask me all the time, Mayor, what can I do to show support for our police department? Say thank you. Say thank you to the officers that you see out in your neighborhoods, um, uh, patrolling um, businesses and, and residential streets. Just say thank you. They need to know that their city has their back, and it's important that the residents are articulating that um, to our officers. Now, when it comes to our weekend strategy at Navy Pier specifically, a command post of CPD, CFD, FBI, OEMC, and others will be monitoring over 600 video cameras, the perimeter and security checkpoints to ensure a safe, beautiful, and festive fireworks show. Because public safety stretches beyond law enforcement agencies, our new corridor ambassadors will be out this weekend as well to provide a friendly, welcome presence on local streets. And for those of you who don't know, Corridor Ambassadors um, is a program funded by the City of Chicago and operated by a dozen community-based organizations that hire, train neighborhood residents to greet passersby and provide information on parking, dining, shopping, all the neighborhood amenities. These ambassadors also help connect people experiencing homelessness to city resources coordinate with public safety agencies on potential safety hazards, medical emergencies, and possible criminal activity. As you can see um, from the design, they have very distinctive uh, vests. Um, they carry radios and phones and are in constant contact with supervisors who are in turn in contact with local um, districts. So this is another way in which we are expanding the opportunities for public safety across our neighborhoods. I want to thank each and every one of our corridor ambassadors and also the community-based organizations for stepping up to serve our city in this important time. These ambassadors can be found throughout targeted streets and commercial quarters um, through the city, such as in the back of the yards, the Mag Mile, Greater Chatham, uh, Auburn Gresham, and other neighborhoods. And again, you're wearing uh, blue vests with yellow reflective uh, strips that say, how can I help? This program is an additional layer of our whole of city uh, public safety strategy to ensure that our neighborhoods are safe and thriving, and this weekend and every weekend. Let me also just say and um, really pick up on a point uh, that Director Guidance made. Parents, 
make sure you know this weekend where your children are and who they are with. That's critically important. We want our young people to uh, be able to enjoy um, all of the incredible opportunities uh, for fun and safe activities that are happening all over our city. But where that begins is at home. So parents, guardians, caring adults in our children's lives have a plan for them this weekend, know where they are and who they are with, critically important. Our city and our partners are fully prepared and ready to make this holiday weekend a fun and safe 4th of July holiday. And as we commemorate our nation's freedoms, let us not forget that we have a lot to be proud of um, living in the city and state um, in the United States of America. It's important for us to highlight those moments of joy and make sure uh, that we recognize the freedoms that we have in this country uh, are not available to people throughout the world. That comes shining through every single day when we look at what's happening on the international scene. Uh, but we have a responsibility and an opportunity in this democracy to not forget that we are each other's neighbors and that we've got to find common ground to be able to move forward. So let's continue to find that common ground, respect each other, uh, respect um, each other's um, property, uh, and make sure that we have a fun and safe um, holiday weekend. And with that, I'll ask Superintendent Brown uh, to come to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to start by giving a brief update on the condition of our officer who was shot and wounded this morning. He's in serious but stable condition. And we ask that you all continue to pray for this officer's full recovery and for the officer's family, as well as the men and women of the Chicago Police Department and their families uh, to continue to do all they can to protect the people of Chicago. Due to these brave and courageous efforts of not only the officer that was wounded this morning, but to all the officers every day giving everything to protect the people of Chicago, June 2022 uh, month compared with June 2021, homicides were down 20 percent and shootings were down 20 percent. For the year, January to June, homicides are down 10 percent. And Mayor, as of this morning, shootings are down 17 percent. So we're making progress, but only due to not only the bravery and courage of our officers, but the collaboration with all these city departments that are represented here and that are not represented here that work together, particularly through the Community Safety Coordination Center. Uh, the 4th of July is a big weekend. The month of July is a very challenging month for public safety. Traditionally, families get together to celebrate in their neighborhoods and in the parks, and many visitors, tourists, come to explore and enjoy our city. And many come to Navy Pier to see the fireworks show, among many, many more events throughout this weekend and uh, the month. There's no reason why everyone can't enjoy the holiday in every event safely and i'm going to echo one more time parents please please know where your children are participate participate with them in their enjoying the city don't leave them to government to be the parents of your kids we need you parents please to help us make sure your young people are safe in addition don't shoot weapons in the air in celebration of the 4th of July. What goes up must come down. And those bullets that, sh that are shot in the air come down and can kill. They can kill and seriously wound. So please don't shoot firearms in the air. We've all been working together to make sure we've had the resources and have the information uh, that we need to share amongst the many public safety partners that we have. Every day, the Chicago Police Department works tirelessly to enhance our safety in every neighborhood. This holiday weekend, we will be just as dedicated across communities as well as our downtown. You'll see an increased presence and more officers on foot patrols, on bike patrols, on our CTA, on our beaches, and at all of our special events. We've ensured that we have enough officers where we need them most. They'll be spending their holiday weekend, our officers will, 
making sure fellow Chicagoans can enjoy their holiday. And we're grateful to our officers for their courage, for their commitment, and their service and sacrifice. The department has also coordinated precision, precision deployments that includes personnel from our public safety headquarters deployed to some of our historically more violent neighborhoods to ensure that those neighborhoods have the same safety as all neighborhoods in Chicago. In addition to these deployments, we'll have the Marine Unit ensuring people can celebrate safely on the lakefront. And officers will continue to focus on those violent neighborhoods that account for more than half of the violence, uh, as well as ensuring presence in all of our neighborhoods. So every neighborhood will have the same uh, commitment from the Chicago Police Department and all of the city resources working together. But we're also calling on our community to, and that yes, that means you. Every resident has a part to play in our city's safety. And with that, I'll bring up uh, Commissioner Holt. Commissioner. Good afternoon. I am Annette Nance Holt, Fire Commissioner of the Chicago Fire Department. Um, as we head into the 4th of July weekend in Chicago, please celebrate and enjoy your families in a safe manner and exercise caution. <clears throat> I want to remind Chicagoans that fireworks are banned statewide and that the city also prohibits sparklers and bottle rockets because they are dangerous. The, the injuries that we see every year range from minor burns to catastrophic and life-changing injuries that include loss of fingers, damage to eyes, and even fatalities. Last year, CFD paramedics and firefighters treated 54 people with fireworks-related injuries. The Chicago Fire Department will have resources out this weekend. Actually, we've added additional resources, and we are prepared to respond to any emergency that this city has. However, we hope that we have zero calls for fireworks-related injuries or deaths. That's our hope. We encourage families to take advantage of the many fireworks shows done by professionals, especially at Navy Pier. So also in addition to that, as we grill, a lot of people grill for the holidays. We all love it. Make sure you grill safely, that you do not place charcoals into receptacles that are not approved. They have to be metal. They can't be plastic. And you don't want to ignite a grill or cook next to anything that's combustible. So these are things that will save us a lot of property damage and also probably save lives because we've had incidences where grills have been too close to a structure and caught, caught them on fire. So let's have a happy and safe holiday weekend and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Happy to take your questions. Yes, I'm here. Uh, members of the media, Kevin and I will bring down the mic uh, to you uh, on topic, going through questions uh, for reporters. Christine, if you want to kick it off, please. Here's the mic. Sure. <laughs> Thanks so much. So obviously the bigger message, like you had said, you know, make sure you keep everyone safe or everyone stays safe this weekend. But what if they do see something and they do come across something that they just want to question and say, hey, I don't know if this is right. Do they just go ahead and risk it and call? Well, obviously we want our residents, if they see something, to say something. Um, if they believe that it's criminal activity or um, something that's going to be endangering the public, they should pick up the phone and call 911. Our call takers and dispatchers um, do a phenomenal job 24-7. Uh, they are ready um, to take the call. And if people see something, they absolutely should say something and not hesitate. If it's a non-emergency issue um, that they're seeing, they should call 311. And you agree sometimes? Uh, do I have to pose my question? Or? Sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, I, could you put some numbers behind? You talked about additional police resources. Uh, how many additional officers will be out? Uh, oftentimes, there's like a you know, there's state police folks out uh, with their county folks, and uh, so and if you cancel weekends or holidays or something to find extra officers, so I'm wondering how many extra officers will be out this weekend? Sure, we, we obviously don't ever give a actual number of officers, but yes, we cancel days off four times a year. Uh, for the holidays, that's Memorial Day, that's uh, Father's Day weekend, as well as this weekend, 4th of July, and then again, and Labor Day weekend, so that's eight cancel days off. And then we rotate cancel days off depending on the large special events like Lollapalooza and other large special events, another, uh, you know, 
eight to 10 days. So a total of 20 days out of the, we lost count at 180 some days that officers have personal leave off. So it's a minimal impact, but you know, again, it's compressed between Memorial Day and, and Labor Day. And that's been obviously the challenge with managing uh, compressed uh, times where officers have to work uh, due to the obviously large plan defense that we have to make sure that they're safe. So while we don't give a number, we do have adequate resources, as I stated in my comments, where we need them. So Navy Pier obviously is a focus. All of our high violence areas are obviously the top 55 beats are a focus, as well as areas within every neighborhood is a focus of our department to include our downtown, but every neighborhood in this city has a focus for our officers to make sure not only that we have presence, but that we also have proactive policing to ensure our residents are safe. All right, Kinsey, Trivi. Yeah, hi, um, I have a couple of questions. Um, violence has been up downtown recently, so I'm curious to know how you're going to respond, um, recently being in the last couple of weeks, uh, to respond for the influx of tourists that are expected downtown. It's been a steady influx of tourists. I, I don't know if you've all been watching, but it's been uh, really exciting to see uh, the tourism, the people coming out, feeling comfortable, enjoying our city. Presence has been a big, big effort of ours uh, for all of our tourism areas. Uh, I think perceptions of crime and safety are as important as the statistical crime and safety that we talk about every week, the declines in shootings and homicides don't mean much uh, if you, uh, your perceptions of safety are not uh, you know, high, at a high level as well. So that's where our efforts at present. So we have, if you notice, several fixed posts. We have our blue lights on. We have officers on foot. Uh, we have officers on bike. We manage a lot of protests downtown. So there's a lot of police uh, presence and coordination. And I would add the ambassadors that the mayor talked about is going to another, add another significant layer of security measures that we hope speaks to perceptions of safety. And so with that proactive policing and the presence, um, are you going to have adequate resources to respond to the influx of 911 calls for people who are seeing something and saying something? Yes, uh, as I mentioned in the question from the Sun-Times reporter, you know, these weekends are the most challenging. The, the Memorial Day weekend, Father's Day weekend, and this Fourth of July weekend, and then obviously the Labor Day weekend are all more challenging weekends, not only around uh, violence, but uh, there's a lot of special events. So we, we do cancel uh, the officer's days off. That's eight days over that Memorial Day to uh, Labor Day of the 104 off days that officers have in a year. So we try to manage that because it is compressed between May and, and Labor Day, but you know there, there, there's been obviously a lot of rhetoric around that that's not accurate. Uh, but we are managing our officer schedule as best uh, we can. But uh, the main thing is that we are sworn to protect the people of this city. And sometimes that does mean extraordinary sacrifice to include being away from our families. Uh, but we do it because we're sworn uh, to protect this city. And uh, each of our officers are dedicated and committed to making sure that happens. Thank you. Thank you. Charlotte Wachowski, NBC. Uh, and also for the superintendent. So. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, sir. Can I, can I just add in response to the last question? Um, we're extremely happy and pleased to see the number of tourists that are coming back to our city. You know, this is something that we monitor on a regular basis and what we're seeing um, and hearing from um, obviously our convention and tourism folks as well as restaurant tours, Navy Pier, is that they are very close and in some instances exceeding their pre-pandemic uh, numbers. So our shows are coming roaring back. Um, they're you know, at the convention center, they're at the hotels. Um, so we feel very, very positive about the rebound um, of our economy because we're seeing um, the vital uh, convention and tourism business um, come back. And we're ready for them to come back. We've missed them. Um, and we're gonna make sure that we do everything we can to keep them safe. Charlie, what, what was your question? Um, I'm just wondering if you had a chance to talk to the officer who was wounded this morning. Is he alert? Is he I did. responsive? He, he is alert and he is responsive. His, his family is very grateful that he's uh, recovering. Um, but there's, there's a lot of recovery that, that needs to happen. Um, he had serious injuries. He, he will need a lot of prayers to, to fully recover. And we're 
just asking that everyone join us in praying that his uh, recovery uh, goes well. We're hearing uh, that the suspect may have been a felon uh, with other uh, weapons violations. Anything you can tell us about him? I, I think the extent of the comment on, on the history, the criminal history of, of, of this offender is that he, he, he is a convicted felon. Uh, but, you know, the rest of it is, I think, just hyperbole. Uh, right now, what we know is he's a convicted felon. That's as far as we should go, given what we've seen of his criminal history. And charges yet? Not yet. Pending. We'll to make sure we get it right. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your patience, Meyer. Meyer, ABC. Superintendent Brown, I know you mentioned the officer was shot several times. Were you able to indicate where those wounds are in the abdomen or anything like that? Yeah, so uh, we have to be careful with this as well. We're not the doctors, but uh, in the torso, I think is the best description of where he was shot several times in the arm as well. And not ready to confirm the identity just yet? Not yet, no, no, no. And lastly, is there anything, I know you said as soon as they got off the elevators, they were shot at, is there any kind of procedure or something the officers should do in those situations to maybe not go in as blind and be vulnerable? Well, they were ambushed. This, this wasn't a matter of uh, police tactics. Uh, they were ambushed, clearly. Offender had intentions to harm them. Um, and there's a video uh, that we, we're continuing to look at that confirms uh, that they were ambushed. Uh, so the, the best laid plans don't, don't account for being ambushed by someone who's intending to harm you as soon as you uh, get off an elevator. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Superintendent. Thanks a lot, Mayor. That's a wrap, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.